So this is where you get your water from to water the garden. Yeah. Geez, how deep is that? Do you go down? <laughs> but if it starts raining, it's calm, calm. Oh, if it starts raining, it yeah. comes up. Yeah. From water that flows in or water that comes in from, seeps in from underground? Yeah. Underground? Yeah, underground. Oh. Nice bananas. Yeah, nice bananas. Do you eat? Yes. There's some coming here. Are they sweet? Yeah, they are sweet. Oh. My grandmother planted this tree. Okay. Years and years and hours like this. Small. <laughs> and mangoes. These are they sweet? Okay. Still about a month to ripen. One month to go. Yeah. So you've planted maize. What's that one? Pumpkin. Yeah, pumpkin. This one's. Uh, Sweet potato, mm. and this is uh, rape, chomolia, spinach, some more baby maize. Ah, so you should have some food. <laughs> Tomatoes, maybe. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Lady finger. Have you planted them? All right. And uh, Lude, Lude used to come there on the back wall. It still yeah. comes? Yes. Wow. That's nice. Lude is like a traditional um, plant that grows. So here we have an apple tree, mango there. That's an orange tree that my dad planted. And this is a clementine or nachi tree. Yeah, nachi tree. Don't get as yellow as the ones you buy in town, but they get very very sweet so i'm about very to taste sweet. this one yeah oh nice one and dennis looks after them yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. we've been playing for half an hour and we're both sweating Except he's sweating out through his mouth and I'm sweating out through my pores. He's a canine, carnivore, and I'm not. He eats meat. I don't. He's designed to eat meat, aren't you, Bo? Huh? Aren't you, Bo? Love meat, don't you? Look at that. Teeth for meat. I rub some fly smear on him. Um, in the summer over here, we get uh, the dogs suffer from some biting flies that target the ears, the nose, the ankle joints, all the bone joints. Terrible. So I just smeared him with some fly smear, and now he's trying to get it off. Hey, Bo. <laughs> it smells of uh, eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. It's the same sort of stuff I've been using to smear all over myself uh, for mosquitoes. It's a nice hot morning and I'm about to go for a nice long run. Uh, it's around 22 minutes past 10 in the morning. But late to have an early morning run. But that's just me. So I'm going to punish all those bananas and then go for a run. Two things I want to share with you guys. I showed you some macadamia nuts the other day from my auntie's tree. These are the ready, ready macadamia nuts. So the green shell I showed you the other day turns brown. And then in there you've got the nut itself which you still need to crack. Now that's the thing, this is how nature gives it to us. When you find it in the supermarkets, it's already been burnt open, so they use heat to crack it open. And once you use heat to crack, crack open the nut, that makes the oil useless. And once you expose the oil to light, that makes it useless as well. So make sure when you buy your nuts, buy them one in season, and then two 
buy them when they in their shells and not as an everyday snack but just as a meal once in a while not sorry not as a, a meal once in a while but as a, a snack once in a while all right second thing i want to share with you guys is the class classifieds i want to, you to have a look at the price of houses in zimbabwe now i stay in the second largest city of zimbabwe and we're gonna have a look at the price of houses in a top top range suburb i live in sort of like a middle class suburb and this is a top range suburb golden oldie three beds two en suite bathrooms large kitchen lounge ninety five thousand that's us three beds main suite lounge dining room study good security pool ball a hundred and fifty thousand us <laughs> Uh, suburbs, this is a very nice place to live in. I'd love to live there. Four beds, main ensuite lounge, kitchen, uh, large lounge, large kitchen, laundry, garage, walled, gated, 120,000 US. Now, in London, <laughs> I'd be paying this price, <laughs> actually, this price for a one bedroomed flat, yeah, in pounds. This would be in pounds. 180,000 minimum minimum you, you these days you're getting flats 200 220,000 uh, for a flat in London one bedroom flat pounds here in Zimbabwe I can get a huge yard I mean I showed you the guys the size of our yard it's 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 probably half of half a size of a football pitch right and I live in a, 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 a medium a middle class sort of neighborhood and uh, for this type of type of, of property, I mean, Kumalo and suburbs is just top range uh, housing in, in in my city, and and I could get a big yard with a pool and four bedrooms, ensuite. Look at all this stuff in US. So you convert that, you're looking at uh, maybe a hundred thousand pounds at the most. For a huge yard with a pool and all this stuff in there, so imagine what you can get for two hundred thousand pounds. Hey, eh? two hundred thousand pounds in London, you'd get a one-bedroom dingy little flat, and in Zimbabwe, for two hundred thousand pounds, <laughs> I'd get you a farm, my friend. For two hundred thousand, you could get a farm. You could plant as many fruit trees as you like, grow all your vegetables. Watch nature. City life. Get out of the city. People have been asking me, asking me, mainly my relatives. Check out this guy tilling the land. When I left this morning, he was out in the hot sun. I'm coming back now at 22 minutes past two. He's still in the hot sun. I don't know if you guys can see him. Tilling his land, planting his food, and the food he's planting is maize, corn, which he cooks into sadza or ugali, the same thing the Kenyans eat. It powers him, gives him loads of energy, packed with carbohydrates, like we've been telling you all this time. But you don't want to know. So anyway, I got relatives. Unfit relatives. They wondering how can a guy come from the UK who hasn't been here for five years and run in the heat of the African sun. In the UK, I don't get sun for <laughs> 10 to 11 months. No sun. I come here and I can run in the heat of the African sun when they can't. Why is that? Why is that? What's so special about me? What's so special about that guy out in the field? Now let me tell you, the rich man's diet <laughs> is the diet that kills. Don't eat like a king, man. You gotta eat like a beggar. Simple, the simple poverty diet is the one that works. High carb, low fat, low protein. As soon as I get into town, I see everybody eating chicken takeaway and fry this and fry that. It's not going to work. So every time I come home, the one thing that Zimbabweans will complain about a lot is the heat. 
Oh, it's too hot, it's too hot, it's too hot. And then, oh, it's too cold, it's, too, it's really cold. Oh my gosh, it's cold. So they're saying to me, how come you like in the heat and the heat's not getting to you? Well, in the UK, I sit in an office with a jumper on and four eaters on. Because we're tropical creatures. We're not meant to be in the cold, right? When I go into the sauna to talk to customers, I go in with my work uniform on. Wait until I start sweating and then I jump out. So they're saying, the heat, the heat, the heat. Aren't you feeling the heat? Isn't it too hot for you? And I say, well, of course it's hot. But the difference between me and them, why I can handle the heat, why that guy could handle the heat, is not because we're special or we're fit or our genetics, it's because we put less shit into our system. And by shit, I mean the wrong type of human foods. They're not for our body. When you put them into your system, the system overheats, you clog it up. Think of it this way. Go to your mechanic, right? Ask your mechanic, why does my car overheat? Why does it boil? Why is my car overheating? Your mechanic will tell you there's obstruction in the system. It's blocking up and that's what's causing the overheating. You need an engine overhaul. You need a clean out. Pistons are dirty or oil filter or something is blocking up the cooling system. And that's the same thing with sick, unfit people. I mean, I'm not as fit as the Kenyans. Com com compare me to the Kenyans and I've got a lot more stuff in my system that I still need to get rid of. And it takes time. Whereas the Kenyans, <laughs> all their lives, haven't been eating shit. Hmm? <laughs> So I just finished a run. It was a two-part run. I left this morning just after uh, 10 o'clock and uh, it, it was a one-hour run into town but before I left I had about eight bananas, right? Got into town, I loitered about checking out some places, art galleries and whatnot for about 30-45 minutes chatting to friends. And then I set off running again, but before that, I had another two bananas and set off running on my way back. And all the while, this is what I'm drinking. Right? I got my camel back on me and I'm sucking on one and a half liters of water going that way, one and a half liters of water coming back. This, people, is my cooling system. This is my radiator, the same thing a car has in its in its, in its engine, in its mechanism to keep it cool so that it doesn't overheat. I'm, when I was running, I was sweating buckets and I replace the body with buckets. Throw in a little bit of orange juice, a little bit of sugar in there. So this is what I'm having as a snack after my run. What is it? It's vegetables, people. Vegetables. <laughs> Those are vegetables. I'm going to use that as an intestinal broom to sweep out all the fiber is going to be used to sweep out all the toxins that the run has helped to release. Now that's just a snack. Just a snack. If I want to operate at maximum capacity tomorrow and the next, I got to smash in the carbohydrates, smash in the energy. Equal amount put in, your body will give you the equal amount coming out. Check it out, it's raining outside. Rains every day now, in the rainy season. So to sum it all up, I need to go have a shower. To sum it all up, to answer the question of why I can handle the heat and other people can't in Zimbabwe is because I put less toxic foods, poisonous causing foods, disease forming foods, mucus causing foods into my system than they do. They eat a rich man's diet, high in protein, 
high in fat, high in oils, high in animal food, animal products, dairy, cheese, milk, chicken, beef, pork, oils, seafood. They think that the more they eat that, that sort of diet, the better they are. But nature works the opposite way because that's not the first diet that she gave for man. And so that is why I can tolerate the heat out here much better than them because my engine, my system is not heating up as much as theirs. Their system heats up just by standing or sitting in the office, whereas mine doesn't. Go vegan, man. <laughs> You're behind. Catch up. Zoos and SeaWorld? Nah. Nah. It's not on. Get rid of that shit. Mm-mm. Come on, my brother.